Hello everyone, my name is Nasrul Azwan Alam. Today, I will talk about Toshit. In this chapter, we will focus on the analysis of structural members and machine parts that are in Toshit. So, first, let's we look at, at what is the definition of Toshit. Toshit is the twisting of an object due to an applied Torque. Now, what is a torque? Torque is a force that tends to twist a member about its longitudinal axis. The figure at the bottom right is one of the example of simple power generation system where the turbine has a torque T on the shaft and shaft transmit the torque to the generator. Based on the equilibrium principle, generator will also create an equal and opposite top T. Looking at the shaft at the bottom left of the slide, we can see that the shaft is under torsion, where the shaft is subjected to the torque, which acting about the longitudinal axis. The objective of this chapter is to analyze and determine the stresses and strain of circular shaft that subjected to torque. Before we analyze in detail the shaft under torsion, let's we look at the torsional failure mode. As we know, ductile material generally fail in shear, while brittle material are weaker in tension. When we analyze the stress distribution of the shaft under pure torsional load, we can see that the maximum shear stress occur at the plane perpendicular to the shaft axis. Therefore, the fracture surface of that time material, as shown in picture 2, is usually observed. Meanwhile, maximum normal stress occur at the plane of 45 degree to the shaft axis. As a result, the fracture surface of the brittle material is usually observed as shown in picture 3. Now, let's proceed with the torsional formula. When the member for our case is a shaft is subject to torque, the shear stress will be developed. The shear stress or tau induced due to the torque is given by the Tp over J, where P is the intermediate or radial distance, which is measured from the center to the any point in the cross-sectional area as shown in picture 4. J is the polar moment of initial. The formula of J will be discussed in the next slide. From the slide, we can see that when the P is maximum, which is P equal to C, so the tau will also will be maximum. Based on the formula, we can see that the, the value of shear stress is proportional to the P. When P increase, the shear stress is increased. As I said before, the shear stress is maximum when the P reach to C, where C is the radius of the shaft. Based on the formula, it also can be seen that the shear stress of solid circular shaft is equal to zero at the center of the shaft and the value is the maximum is maximum at the outer surface the shear stress as well as the shear stress varies linearly along the radial line on the cross section as long as the material is in elastic In order to calculate the shear stress in the material under torsion, 
it is required to determine the polar moment of inertia of cross section J. For solid circular shaft, J is given by pi multiplied by C power of 4 and divided by 2. As mentioned earlier, C is the radius of the shaft. For hollow shaft, however, the J is given by the pi multiply the difference between C2 power of 4 and C1 power of 4 and divided by 2. The C2 and C1 is the outer surface, sorry, is the outer and inner radius respectively. The maximum shear stress occur at the outer surface while the minimum shear stress occur at the inner surface. The minimum shear stress of hollow shaft, however, is not equal to zero as in solid shaft. Now, let's we consider the solid shaft which is loaded by top T as shown in picture 5. What will be the shear stress at point K, L, and M? Can you write the shear stress formula at this point? Point K and L are located somewhere at the cross-section of the shaft, while point M is at the outer surface. For point K, the shear stress tau is given by the top T multiply by the pk where the pk is the radial distance from the center of the shaft to point k so the pk is measured from the center which is here to the point k so that is a pk and divide by j for point L, applying the same equation, the tau at point L is given by T times P L, where the L is measured from the center of the shaft to point L divided by J. So that is equation for shear stress at point K and shear stress at point L. At point M, the shear stress is maximum and is equal to the T times P M over J. Since the P M, which is measured from the center to point M, is equal to the radius of the shaft which is equal to C so that we can replace the PM by the C and over J. So that is the equation for the tau maximum or tau at point M. Next, free body diagram FPB. The analysis of torsion is usually required the student to draw the free body diagram of the system being analyzed. Some students may find difficult to draw free body diagram in three-dimensional form. This slide shows the approach that can be used to transform the three-dimensional system under torsion into free body diagram in two-dimensional form. The method use the right hand rule lets your finger curl in the direction of the top and your thumb will point in the direction of the vector. The pictures 7 and 8 show this transformation.
Can you draw the free body diagram and 2D form for the shaft in the power transmission system below? Let's assume the shaft is freely rotated at the end support bearing. So for this case, we can start draw the free body diagram of the shaft. And then let's draw the point K, point L, and also point M. So from the right hand rule, the, the K, the top at the K will be directed to the right. At point L, the top will be directed to the left. Since the direction at point M is similar to the direction at point L, so the top at point M is also will be directed to the left. Power transmission. One of the reasons of using the shaft is to transmit the mechanical power from one machine to another. The amount of machine transferred, sorry, the amount of power transmit depends on the magnitude of the torque and the rotational speed. In design, the required diameter of the shaft to transmit a specific amount of power is usually determined so that the stress in the shaft will not exceeding the allowable stresses of the material. Before we go in detail on how to determine the required diameter for the shaft to transmit specific amount of power from one machine to another, let's we start with the definition of the power. Power is defined as the work performed per unit of time, where the power P is equal to torque multiplied by angular velocity omega. Since one cycle or one rotation is equal to 2 pi radian, the angular velocity omega can be written equal to 2 pi f where f is the frequency. Therefore, the formula for the power p is equal to 2 pi ft. Note that the frequency f is equal to the number of rotation per minute n over 60. Note that the analysis discussed in this video has some limitation. The equation presented are limited to circular cross-section, both solid and hollow shaft, under linearly elastic manner. Also, the effect of stress concentration is not accounted in the formula. The cross-section of non-circular bar such as rectangular, I-shape and other shape does not remain plain when subjected to torque. Therefore, non-circular bar behave quite differently as what has been presented in this video. This is the end of the video of part 1. Till we meet again in part 2. Thank you. Bye-bye.